So good evening and welcome to the MedStaff quarterly meeting of December 2020. Hope you are healthy and well um, and welcome. We have a really interesting program this evening. You're going to hear from a series of leaders of this hospital, of this medical center, about what's happening now, about plans for the near future. I think if you listen tonight, you'll have some surprises and you'll have a good feeling about what is happening here today. For me, this is the last time I will address a quarterly meeting of the med staff as your elected medical staff president. I stepped down, it's term limited, on January 1. I'm very excited that unless an astonishing surprise occurs with the elections tonight, uh, Ms. Dr. Ron Bachner will step into this role. Ron is a tremendous leader with a long commitment to this institution, uh, with a belief in what we're doing here, we're building here, uh, really good with relations. And one thing I'm really excited about with Ron is that Ron is not only the first surgeon in decades that we've had to take this role, but he has a deep understanding of the individual needs of the individual clinician. I think if anything to say about Ron is he's going to be able to say, what is it that makes the practice of medicine better, more enjoyable, more efficient, more accurate? What allows us to practice the individual clinician's day-to-day uh, -day business that much better? So I'm very excited to have Ron. I'm looking forward to supporting him. I encourage all of you to support him you know, going forward. For me, this ends uh, six years of uh, serving uh, as medical staff president. I think it's been a remarkable six years. I mean, during this time, we've seen a massive growth and change of this institution. We saw the merger first with this hospital with Somerset, and then with Hamilton, and then the Barnabas system. We've seen the, the deeper connection of the medical school. Uh, we've seen all these things come together. In my time here, over a thousand clinicians have joined our medical staff as we have massively expanded. Uh, we built the new emergency room. We built the new neurointensive care unit, cardiovascular intensive care unit. Uh, we built a, n a numeral number of programs and connections that we continue to grow and to strive to become uh, part of our WG Barnabas and all the hard work that we've done and still and still have to do. I'm particularly proud of the work we've done around the LGBTQ community and the services we've built there. I'm very proud about the communication abilities that we've built for your medical staff so you know, know what is going on here. This has been a very exciting time uh, for me, uh, for this institution, um, and it's been truly a thrill uh, you know, to go forward. There are a number of people that I must thank for all their hard work in supporting me, working with me, teaching me in the past several years. You know, first and really critical, you know, I have to thank Ms. Nicole Berner. Nicole Berner, who is the Director of the Medical Staff Office. For those who do not know her, and I suspect that's very few of you, um, this is a remarkable leader, teacher. She has a deep understanding of medicine and the med staff uh, role, um, and she has been a tremendous guide for me. It is nothing that I could have done uh, without her guidance and her teaching. And I thank the, the staff of the Medical Staff Office themselves for their hard work over the past several years and all of they have done. I have to thank a early teacher of mine in this role, uh, Dr. Josh Brashad. Um, Josh, of course, stepped up to a system role. It was a tremendous guide for me, uh, a tremendous support, you know, and what uh, little good I've been able to do, a lot of it came because of the guidance he has given me. I want to thank the leaders of the MEC who have met with me on an ongoing basis. None of you may not know this, but every Tuesday morning at 7.30, now for years and years, the entire time I've been here and before that, there's a small group of leaders that meets with me every Tuesday morning to talk about what is going on here. And these people have been critical to me. First of all, they are the former presidents of the recent president of the medical staff, uh, uh, Dr. Andy Kovit, Andrea Angosa, both of which continue to give massive amounts of time and energy and have been a tremendous guide for me. They are Nel, Dr. Nell Maloney Patel, uh, who's been a tremendous source of support and teaching. Uh, they are Matt LaSauer, you know, who's been a tremendous guide you know, in, you know, on a day-to-day -day, you know, uh, basis. You know, and I really appreciate each of what these things have done. I have to thank uh, you know, Mr. Chris Honig, you know, who has built this uh, communication package and has been so much a core of what we have done here. I don't think any of us quite understood that we were going to be capable of taking it this far, and he has you know, been an important guide you know, in, in doing that. And I also critically have to thank all the members of the Medical Executive Committee, all the elected officers, all the chiefs and chairs. You don't get the opportunity to attend MEC meetings on a daily basis, but these people take the 
future of this hospital incredibly seriously, and they work very hard, and you owe them a great deal of thanks because much of what we build here is because of them. During the time I have been here, I am now serving with the fourth uh, president, CEO and president of the hospital, and each has been important to me. You know, Steve Jones, you know, who first oriented me to my role, um, got me involved with the board, taught me the, you know, the steps, was extremely important, so I have to you know, thank Steve. Mike Antoniotis, in his brief time, made an important point to me in that he needed me more connected to operations and what was happening here in the hospital, um, and he got me into that role. And then, of course, the remarkable and amazing John Gantner. John is a wonderful teacher, a wonderful friend, uh, a brilliant uh, hospital administrator and finance, and, he, and of course, that his incredible ability to engage and to support. Um, and I have a, a, to him a tremendous number, a number of thanks. Um, and then I welcome uh, Bill Arnold, uh, you know, who I'm excited to have here um, you know, as, you know, as, we, as, we move, as we move forward. Most of you don't have the opportunity uh, to work at, with or listen to you on, a, on an ongoing basis with our chair, uh, Mr. Jack Morris. Um, Jack, who I've been now the opportunity to work on the board here as well as the board of the system for the past you know, six years. What you miss because you had uh, the opportunity is how much energy and how much work and how much deep love Jack has the institution and how much he touches this institution and how much time he's put in. And Jack has taught me a lot by his leadership and his drive and his love of this institution. And then, of course, Barry Ostrowski, CEO and president of the system, whose vision for this system, vision for uh, patient care, for being involved in the community, for diversity, for what we can build together, has driven much of this. And I have to thank him for all he has taught and, he, and his leadership. I have to thank my partners in practice um, over the past few years, not once, when I've canceled meetings that I was supposed to have with them, rescheduled my patients and didn't, didn't show up when I was supposed to show up for, you know, for meetings that we had, you know, did any of them complain. Uh, they were always supportive and positive, and I thank every one of them for what they had to give to make my role possible. And then, of course, I cannot possibly forget the main teacher guide in my life, the person that keeps me on the straight and narrow, uh, my wife, some of Nancy Pinkin, you know, who not only do I deeply love, uh, but who has uh, been a great teacher and guide in going, in going forward. The coming time is going to be remarkable. Uh, you are all remarkable caregivers. You all have a deep love of this institution. And together we will continue to build not only a great hospital, because that's the base where we start, not only great tertiary continuity care, but we will continue to work towards that base goal that we've all really need to move forward, and that is building a true academic medical center. This will be the place that they cure Alzheimer's disease. This is the place that we cure cancer. This will be the place we will teach the next major scientists and teachers and caregivers, whether they're physicians or they're nurses or they're pharmacists, etc. This is a academic medical center which is coming to, to fruition and the coming years will be very exciting and I am thrilled to be part of that and I, have, and I am thrilled to have been able to spend these years uh, committed to you as your medical staff presidents and all that we have done together. So we have a wonderful show this evening if you will. Uh, you will be hearing from a series of leaders. Uh, the first leader that we are hear, hearing from this evening um, is the acting CEO and president, Mr. Bill Arnold. I have had the opportunity to work with Bill before. Uh, this he took the role here. He serves as the uh, chief of the southern region of for our Bar uh, RWD Barnabas system. Uh, he's a deep friend of physicians uh, in that setting, and I'm excited to have him here this evening to talk about his role as he comes on board. Thank you, Dr. Salowitz, for this opportunity to speak to the medical staff. It's a real opportunity. Unfortunately, it's like this. I'm much better at meeting people in person, uh, but I see with the times we're living now, this is a great way to stay connected. I'd also like to thank uh, Dr. Salowitz for his tireless effort as president of the medical staff. As, as we all know, he is just finishing his second three-year term. That's an amazing, amazing amount of work, an amazing amount of accomplishments that he's made over the last several years. And, uh, I, for one, have always worked very closely with my president of the medical staff, so I have a good feel for how he's feeling today. I'm sure he's feeling great 
as he looks back on all the accomplishments, not only of Robert Wood Johnson Medical Center, but also the accomplishments that he has made along with his officers. Uh, it's, it's really a, a tribute to him and, and the efforts he's made uh, over the years. Uh, and I will say, as I entered the door of Robert Wood Johnson on my first day, Dr. Salitz was there as, as one of the f few physicians that made sure they greeted me. And, and I have to say, it was, it was nice to see him. I've worked with Dr. Salowitz for many years on, on certain projects, and uh, he's always been a fine individual to work with and, and a special person. So Dr. Salowitz, thank you. Congratulations. I hope you now will have some more time to spend with your family, although I know you will continue to work as you always have, uh, taking care of your many, many patients. Uh, John Gantner, I wanna just mention a few, few points on, on John as well. I, I met John many, many years ago in, in Monmouth County. I, I often referred to him as the legend of finance. Uh, he had not only a local reputation, he had a, quite frankly, nationwide reputation and, and was always a step ahead in the world of finance. Uh, and uh, I know he will be missed here. I wanna thank him for all of the time he's given me to make this transition uh, smooth. He's been very helpful. He has a tremendous amount of, of history and, and local knowledge and his, the passion for Robert Wood Johnson just bleeds through and uh, he's, he's a special person. I know many will miss him. I also will miss him. I've looked up to him as one of my counterparts as I was the past CEO of Monmouth and he was the CEO here. We tended to work together. He, he and I worked to move patients to the appropriate level of care and uh, that was patients going both ways between here and, and Monmouth Medical and I, I just wish him all the luck in his future and I hope he also enjoys his, uh, his new free time and, and and is able to spend some, some moments with his family and, and, and really enjoy the holiday season. So thank you, John. Um, I wanted to just go through a little bit of my background so I could get to meet some of you virtually. Uh, I've worked in the southern region of our system for just better than 20 years and uh, have worked as the CEO of Monmouth Medical. And, and then after that, I moved on to the regional president, the southern region. And uh, over the last couple of years, I've had the opportunity to connect to many of you, both in leadership as well as the private practitioner in the community. And I have to say that is what attracted me to this interim role. I see a real win-win for us all to work together and to continue to connect the dots between Monmouth and Ocean County and Middlesex. Uh, to date, we've had some real success in uh, moving patients from both Monmouth and Ocean County for higher level care to here to New Brunswick. And each and every uh, case has come with a really nice uh, uh, warm welcome, both for the patient and the hospital in sending the patients in this direction. Many happy, happy customers, happy patients and families after those uh, connections were made. The uh, other point that uh, I would like to make is, and many have asked me, is how are you going to handle this interim role? Well, each and every day I'm going to treat this as if I'm um, the permanent CEO. I think it's important for me to have that type of dedication and that type of presence and uh, really work to support each and every one of you and make sure I help you create the best possible environment for you to work and for us to care for patients. So I'm gonna take this position very seriously. One of the other questions I've been asked a lot is what are my priorities? My number one priority is to make sure I develop a relationship with the medical staff. Uh, many of you have, have welcomed me and I, I wanna thank you for that. Several have stopped by, several have made appointments. I've stopped by on some of you, and I have to tell you, I think uh, that is the best way to operate with open communication. Uh, I, I believe the success of an institution like this comes from good, strong administrative and, and uh, physician relationships, as well as board relationships, and ultimately staff relationships. When we all work together, we can create great things, great programs, 
and we can have fun doing it. So I do plan to have a monthly meeting with the chairs. That's a, 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 a um, meeting I had at Monmouth Medical, which went very well. It was an open, open meeting. Uh, we will have agenda, but I think what happens is we end up really focusing on issues that have an impact on each and every physician, as well as our, our patients and staff here at Robert Wood Johnson. So uh, we'll be setting that up right away as we enter the new year, and uh, it will give us an opportunity to really focus and, and develop strategy uh, and, and move forward uh, to, in executing on, on that strategy. I'm not a, the type of person that wants to execute on strategy without having as many fingerprints as possible on that strategy. Uh, so each and every one of you will, will have an opportunity to work either directly with me or through your medical leadership to bring ideas forward so that we can uh, improve program and build new program as we move in t uh, through and in, into uh, 2021. Another uh, important, important point I'd like to make is the work happening right now in New Brunswick with the St. Peter's. Uh, the uh, chairman of the board and, and John Gantner and others have really brought me up to speed on that transaction. So as we move forward, I look, look, I look forward to working with many of you to develop not only Robert Wood Johnson strategy, but New Brunswick strategy. Uh, we have an unbelievable opportunity to create something very special in this market. And the input from each and every medical staff member as we move forward will be important uh, to me and to the future of not only Robert Wood Johnson, but all the healthcare services that will be provided in this, in this market. I, I do want to, again, express my sincere thank you to each and every one of you. I know during these difficult times, sometimes it's hard to stay up. Uh, we're all working so hard to make sure each of you are safe as well as our, our staff and patients as we go into this next wave of, of COVID. And uh, I will tell you, I'm impressed with the management team in their, in their work, uh, both the senior level management as, as well as the managers at the department level that work each and every day to create policy, procedure, and, and, and really make sure that the environment is as, is as safe as possible. Uh, that, that to me is, is, is what we're here to do. First and foremost, take care of patients, but we have to take care of ourselves. And I hope each and every one of you are taking care of yourselves and your families as, as we go through these difficult times. I, I for one, uh, and focused on uh, PPE. That's always a sensitive subject. I know that Dr. Truskin and, and team are working uh, together uh, to really figure out how best to, to provide the, 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 the PPE that's necessary to create safety and, and, and create a safe environment. Uh, for, for all of us, we have to make sure we're following policy and procedure. Uh, NIOSH, uh, OSHA, CDC guidelines are all there. We can all uh, follow those guidelines and then conserve uh, so that we continue to have the, the PPE, the masks, the gowns, and everything else that's necessary uh, to remain safe during these difficult times. As we move into the holiday seasons, uh, I, I hope you all had a nice Thanksgiving and I, I wish you and your families a uh, happy holiday season. I know it's going to be a difficult one uh, given uh, the, the situation we're living in today with COVID, but I know you'll all take some time. Please relax and, and come back energized. Uh, I look forward to 2021. I, I, I will be kicking off a strategic process and I will be looking for input, as I mentioned earlier, from each and every one of you. And I truly look forward to working with the chairs of the departments to move program forward. Thank you and have a great evening. Bill, thank you very much for your kind words. I, I really uh, appreciate it. That's, um, I'm, I, I am touched. Um, I don't know if you could understand, uh, but I, you can uh, feel but Bill has a deep understanding and belief in the clinicians and people on the front line. I know uh, from people at Monmouth, he has very good relationships you know, with the clinical staff. Um, and I think that's going to serve him and us very well as we build here. He also has that system connection 
uh, and system belief you know, in working together that I think is critical as we go forward in the coming years. So I'm thrilled that Bill's here and look forward to working with him. And now, uh, Chief Medical Officer of Robert Jones University Hospital, and Dr. Stan Truskin. Thank you, Dr. Salwitz. First of all, I would, first of all, I'd like to formally thank Dr. Jim Salwitz for his service as medical staff president. Feels like he's been our medical staff president forever, and he's done an absolutely wonderful job. Um, having been a medical staff president in my, one of my former lives, uh, it can be very difficult. And uh, Jim threw his whole being into it, and he has been terrific and special and outstanding. And we all owe him a debt of gratitude, and uh, we wish him well in his uh, other endeavors and he's left his imprint on us. Uh, thank you, Jim. At this point in time, we're in the midst of the national third wave of uh, the pandemic. And I have a couple observations I'd like to share with you about the pandemic. The first, first one is that we, including all of you, did a wonderful job taking care of patients and each other the first time around in the spring. And we learned a lot. And we're all tired, you know, walking around with uh, my mask when it's uh, not on my face. It's, um, it's uh, in my hand or in my pocket. Um, our lives have changed. Uh, by this pandemic and everybody is really tired of this and here we go again so we can do this we can do a great job again we have it in our potential to do that we know what has to be done um, one of the efforts that we've made was to make sure at the level of the hospital that if you need PPE, you need an N95 before you visit a patient who's high risk or has COVID. The nurse director on the COVID units have been instructed to give you what you need before you enter the room. It's very interesting, uh, Dr. Carson and Panateri led a study of hospital workers uh, during the, um, the first surge. And what we found in people who've worked at RWJUH, the frontline healthcare providers had a very low infection rate. And that's a testament to the fact that we know how to take care of ourselves. And we should minimize the anxiety that you won't get what you need because you will. We have the protective equipment. We have it in enough supply. We're going to conserve it so we remain with enough equipment. But if you, need to, if you need equipment before you go in to see a patient, it's going to be here for you. So I want to thank you for all that you do in taking care of our patients and taking care of each other. And although um, we have to go through this again, we're going to be successful probably more successful than we were before. And I'll finish by wishing you all a happy and healthy holiday and new year. Uh, Stan, thank you very much uh, for your comments. I, I, I do appreciate it. You know, I, I uh, love, it's so Stan to, to see his comments, you can do this. You know, because you know, that symbolizes his strength and his leadership and what he you know what he offers so i think that's uh, that's very uh, very positive and very stan so thank you very much stan and now uh senior vice president for operations uh, Ms. lydia stockman thank you dr sowitz and thank you for allowing me this time to share very important information with you as we continue to manage the covid 19 pandemic our second wave surge plan is in effect our plan is a roadmap for cohorting and managing the census safely while we also continue to manage our non-COVID patient population. 
We know that it is critical to maintain services in order to support our community and to save lives. Our community and the community beyond our service area rely on the tertiary and quaternary services provided here at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital. We will continue to provide all services for as long as we can safely deliver care. Unlike the first wave where we immediately stopped all visitation and decanted services, our approach this time is a more gradual glide path in response to the regional activity. For example, we know that the COVID numbers in the state are now consistently much higher and the COVID positivity rate continues to rise. And it is for that reason that we decided to modify our visitor policy and reduce the hours of visitation. We will continue to evaluate daily and make changes as needed. In addition, two more challenges in managing COVID are PPE conservation and staffing. We are very sensitive to making sure staff have the PPE that they need and it is critical that we follow the hospital policy in order to maintain staff protection. We are making changes to the distribution to address the concerns raised about access to PPE. However, I cannot stress enough that appropriate utilization is essential in order to ensure that we have an adequate supply for the long haul. While the short decrease in the summer in cases allowed us to stockpile supplies, we are still experiencing a national supply chain shortage. With the entire country now considered a hotspot, this will continue to be a major challenge. Staffing is also a significant challenge and a shortage of personnel is being experienced across the state. We are working collaboratively with all disciplines to support and implement strategies to address staffing issues. I am grateful and appreciate very much the teams that we are very fortunate to have here at the hospital. Together, I know that we can get through the second wave and we will need to be creative, resilient, and maintain an open mind in order to endure this next surge. The last COVID-related topic is the COVID vaccine. We are scheduled to receive the Pfizer vaccine for distribution for healthcare workers. I don't have the final details as the EUA from the FDA is still pending. Once the EUA is released, I will then be able to share more information and we will have a frequently asked questions document developed. A system team is meeting regularly and we will need a large number of volunteers to serve in roles as check-in, vaccinators, and observers. I'd like to share some operational updates that are non-COVID. There are several projects going on around campus that, we will, that will have a positive clinical impact on the services we provide. We received approval to renovate our gross lab in the pathology department, which will increase the capacity to support those services. We will also automate microbiology with new technology, which will improve turnaround times. And we'll also upgrade our chemistry line, which again will support improved turnaround times and a much more efficient workflow. Our lab continues to lead the way in testing and technology, and we are extremely fortunate to have this team as part of our operations. In radiology, we will install a 3T MRI, meaning we'll have three MRIs on campus uh, by the end of the year, and we will also have a brand new radiology reading room. The OR South building expansion continues to move forward and is on schedule. Next week, we have the opportunity to participate in the signing of a steel beam that will go into place for the structure. This is really exciting expansion and it's a renovation that will result in a state-of-the-art operating uh, room, advanced technology, and much needed space for our PACU recovery area. A smaller project and also an important project is the physician lounge. We partnered with the medical staff office to conduct a survey uh, in order to obtain feedback about the current physician lounge space. We received a lot of good information and we would like to explore moving the physician lounge to a more central location. We are evaluating the former gift shop location and we would like to take the feedback provided and incorporate that into the design. I don't have the date for that official kickoff or move, however, we are moving that evaluation forward. The last operational update I will share is the addition of three rooms on our orthopedic unit to East. We received Department of Health approval to occupy those rooms. That will create much needed capacity. So I want to thank all of you for your efforts, your support and dedication. I truly appreciate all that you do. I cannot express how much it means to me when you send me a thoughtful text message, 
when you stop by my office and check in, when you provide your opinion and your feedback. We may not always agree, and we will definitely have different points of view, and I believe that that is what makes us a successful team. It is through our responses, our flexibility, our sharing of ideas, and our ability to rapidly adapt that has fueled our resilience. One thought that has helped me in the past several months is that we cannot control the change occurring around us, but we can control how we respond to it. I encourage everyone to keep these thoughts in mind, to take care of yourselves and your family, stay safe, and thank you again for all that you do for our patients and for our hospital. Thank you. Thanks, Lydia. You know, uh, uh, when she talks about a roadmap, you know, I can't but think about as a n navigation. And if anyone is able t to navigate us through this, it is Lydia Stockman. Uh, you know, I'm very excited to, ha to have her in this leadership you know, role. She's doing so much. You know, and of course, it's pretty exciting to hear about the, you know, about the physician lounge and those kind of changes as well as the other things she speaks about. So it's not just COVID that's changing around here. There's a lot of other things happening and Lydia is a strong hand to help us to navigate through you know, that, those changes. And now, uh, Chief Nursing Officer, uh, Dr. Ann Labasa. Good evening and thank you, Dr. Salwitz. I briefly would like to give you a few updates on the nursing department. We were scheduled to have our magnet site visit this week. As I have been sharing, we are up for our sixth redesignation. The magnet recognition program provides a roadmap to advance nursing excellence with contented staff as its core optimum job satisfaction results in lower nurse attrition and an improved patient experience. Only about 500 hospitals internationally have the honor of becoming magnet designated, and of those 500, only a handful have been able to maintain designation to this point. I am a magnet appraiser, and I will share it is an honor to hold this prestigious designation. Unfortunately, I have had to postpone our site visit due to COVID and the limitation of only 10 individuals per room. A site visit is a time of celebration and sharing of nursing team success and limiting the nurses to only 10 per room will hamper their sharing. Therefore, our story will be celebrated in the late springtime. More to follow as our new year begins. Secondly, I would like to share some changes to our nursing leadership. Julie Arsenault, who was our AVP of critical care, has transitioned over to the outpatient arena as the AVP of transplant services. We thank Julie for several years of service and we wish her continued success in her new role. As we begin the search for her replacement, Georgia Harrison, who is our CCU director, will assume the interim AVP role and Keisha Holmes will transition as the interim CCU director. In addition, Lauren Michaels, who has been with us for almost 30 years, has decided to take a new role with a sister organization. Lauren has held several roles in the nursing department through her years and has held many leadership roles. And we thank her for her devotion to New Brunswick. And we know she will be successful wherever she goes. While she was in the emergency department, she oriented a new nurse, Stella San Giuliano, to the department, and now she will be oriented her to the interim director role many years later. In addition, Geraldine DiLorenzo, our newest assistant vice president of throughput, has assumed coverage of the emergency department. And finally, Patricia James, the AVP of inpatient services, has assumed coverage of Seven Tower, and Kathy Zavatsky, vice president of nursing excellence, will continue coverage of the oncology services. I would like to touch on one more item in this presentation, and that is patient satisfaction. New Brunswick has been struggling with their HCAP scores over the years and truly has not made a significant impact in quite some time. In review of the data and in comparison with our sister hospitals, we simply have not been able to make an impact as the others have been successful in gaining momentum in their satisfaction scores. This has always been a pet peeve of mine because I believe if the patient is satisfied, they will continue to refer to us, making us successful, moving us to the number one status, which is deserved of us. 
but this is not something that one department can do alone. This is an interdisciplinary effort and we absolutely need everyone to participate and help us move this very important needle. There will be a very comprehensive action plan in 2021 and we ask that you all be part of it and by the end of the year I hope we finally see a significant positive trend in our, in our data. I thank you for your time. I thank you for all you do for our patients and for our staff. And if I do not see you before the end of the year, happy holidays and looking forward to a happy and healthy year with all of you. Thanks, Ann. You know, Ann talks about uh, being number one in patient satisfaction, and it may just seem like something that she thinks is an important idea. Let's be clear, um, she's done this before. Uh, she took the Hospital of Surgery in New York to number one in patient satisfaction. So if anybody knows how to do this, if anyone knows how to drive in this direction, it's Anne. And I have very little doubt that she is going to take us there. So thank you very much. And now, uh, Vice President of RWJ UH Foundation, Mary Burke. Thank you, Dr. Salitz. I joined the foundation back in June, and since then it's been a great pleasure to work with all of the uh, community leaders, board of trustees, and especially the physicians. That's why I came here. Um, this fall we decided to launch a uh, physician campaign uh, to invite and celebrate the physicians in our community who support the hospital philanthropically. I hope that you all will consider making a gift to the foundation this December. Um, you can please visit our website for instructions on different ways that you can do that. I also want to thank those physicians who have already made gifts. It's been great to see the support um, and I think all of the community likes to see the support of leadership here at the institution for philanthropy. It sends a really strong signal to the foundations that we work with and to other donors. We're, looking, we're always looking for new ways of partnering with you, um, particularly around grateful patient fundraising. So I hope that if some of you um, are interested in partnering with the foundation on initiatives here at the hospital that um, you will reach out and, and connect with me. And just one last pitch in terms of this year, um, I want to particularly thank Mike and Marlene Nissenblatt for stepping up um, with a very generous challenge fund for gifts from physicians to the foundation this year. They will be matching all gifts uh, dollar for dollar until the end of the year. So if you can think about making it a year-end gift to the foundation, um, your money will be doubled. So, and your impact will be doubled. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mary. And by the way, thanks, uh, Michael Nisblatt, um, for your offer and your support. So that concludes um, our evening together. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't wish all of you a wonderful holiday season, uh, time I hope with your families, uh, time to share, a time to support each other, take the time to heal, to build. Um, we'll get through this time together um, and we'll continue to build strongly into the future. Uh, so to all of you, have a wonderful evening, uh, stay safe, and we are RWJUH Strong. Thank you.